All right, so today I'm going to show you how to accurately measure vital signs. Um, first thing I want to do is make sure that I have the right patient. Do I have Michelle Doe? Yes. Fantastic. I'm going to then explain the procedure, which is going to be measuring your vital signs, and that's going to include measuring your respiratory rate, I'm going to measure your pulse rate, we're going to look at your oxygen saturation, measure your blood pressure, and then check a temperature. I'm then going to wash my hands and put on some gloves. We're going to start out with measuring the respiratory rate. Um, I'm going to ask the patient to place their hand on the uh, desk, just like such, and I'm actually going to be putting my hand on their wrist as if I'm measuring their pulse, and that's just to kind of distract them so they're not too focused on their um, breathing. And then I'm going to... Um, measure the number of times the chest rises and falls over 30 seconds. So, I want to make sure I have all the equipment I need, which is going to be my stethoscope, my watch, my pulse oximeter, a uh, blood pressure cuff, and my temperature gauge. And now I'm just going to ask you to flip your wrist over there, and I'm going to put my hands on your wrist. I start my watch and I'll be counting the number of times the chest rises and falls over 30 seconds. So there's 30 seconds. I counted seven breaths. So seven times two is 14 breaths per minute, or the chest was rising and falling seven times over 30 seconds, 14 breaths per minute. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure uh, the pulse rate. And the way I'm gonna do that is by also feeling the radial pulse. I'm gonna use two fingers over the radial pulse, which is right here. I'm gonna wait until I find the pulse, good. And I'm going to measure for 30 seconds, so I'm counting the number of beats over 30 seconds. I'm now going to start that. So I counted 29 beats over 30 seconds, so 29 times 2 is 58 beats per minute. Now we're going to measure the oxygen saturation. So I have my oxygen saturation monitor here. I'm going to put that on the finger, start it. Give it a minute here. So. It says here the oxygen saturation is 99%, and her pulse rate is 57, about 57 beats per minute, so very close to what I said. Next, we're going to be measuring your blood pressure. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to get my blood pressure cuff, and I'm going to place this <coughs> on your upper arm. So make sure that my that um, my dial here or my um, pressure uh, monitor is anterior, so I can see that. And you can see here we have uh, the uh, artery here. So this is on her uh, left arm. So I want this this arrow over the brachial artery, which is right here. I'm now going to make sure I have the right size cuff to make sure that the um, the indicator is within range, which it is, and then I'm going to place this on. I'm going to get, put this at put your arm at heart level. Fantastic, good. I'm going to place a stethoscope in my ear, and I'm going to place the uh, diaphragm 
right over the brachial artery in what's called the antecubital fossa. I'm going to close the uh, dial or the bladder dial by turning it all the way clockwise. And now I'm going to inflate the cuff by squeezing the, the bulb. I'm going to inflate it to about 180. I'm going to slowly turn the dial a little counterclockwise to release the pressure. And I'll be listening for the quarter cuff sounds when they start and when they stop. I just heard them start at about 100. And they stopped at 70. So I, now I turn the dial all the way uh, counterclockwise to release the pressure. So 100 over 70 is what I think it was. And I'm now gonna double check that with the automatic cuff. Put your arm through there, perfect. Good. Tighten this down, I want this to be in the front, good. All right. I'm gonna turn on the automatic cuff, so just relax. With the arm at heart level again. One oh four over sixty nine. Good. I'm now going to remove this from your arm, and we'll last thing we'll do is take your temperature. Sorry, it's a little tight here. All right. So we're going to take an oral temperature. I'm going to remove the uh, temperature probe and stick a probe cover on it. Now I'm going to ask you to place this under your tongue and hold it there. Fantastic. Ninety-eight point three. Thank you very much. And finally, what I'm going to do is remove my gloves and wash my hands. And that's how you take uh, accurate uh, set of vital signs. Okay. So the next step is going to be to measure the blood pressure on this blood pressure arm. My first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the uh, blood pressure cuff on the upper arm, and I'm going to make sure that I have the correct size blood pressure cuff by looking at the markings that are here and make sure that this index line is within the selected range, which it is. So I have the correct size cuff. And now I'm going to place my stethoscope on and place the stethoscope um, diaphragm over the brachial artery in what's called the antecubital fossa anteriorly. I'm now going to close the uh, bladder dial here I'm going to, which is turning it all the way clockwise. That closes it, and I'm gonna pump this up, but I can see the pressure rising. I let the pressure rise up to about 180. Once it hits 180, I'm gonna turn the uh, bladder dial a little bit counterclockwise just to let out some of the pressure, and I'm gonna listen for the quarter cough sounds as it goes down. Okay, the pressure, the quarter cough sound started. and they just stopped. Okay, so when I did the reading here, I got about 140 over 75. So I'm gonna take off my stethoscope. I'm gonna check and see what the settings were. 140 over 70. So I wasn't exactly right, but I was within 10%. It was, if you're in within 10% of the systolic and within 10% of the diastolic, then you did just fine. Thanks for watching this video. Do you want to learn more or become certified in this skill? Just visit us at simrated.com.